Welcome back to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we're going to cover the needed prerequisites for installing PyTorch. It's pretty easy to get up and running with PyTorch, so without further ado, let's get it done. Getting started with PyTorch is relatively easy. The recommended best option is to use the Anaconda Python Package Manager. With Anaconda, it's easy to get and manage Python, Jupyter Notebook, and other commonly used packages for scientific computing and data science, including PyTorch, of course. These are the steps to get PyTorch installed. First, we want to download and install Anaconda. Then we want to go to the PyTorch website to the getting started section so we can get the right command to run on our particular system. Once we have the command from the PyTorch website, we run the command at our terminal. I have all the links you need on the text-based post on deepblizzard.com. So we'll first go to the Anaconda website. Here, you'll just download and install the latest version, which is Python 3.6 at the current moment. Once you have Anaconda installed, we need to go to the PyTorch website. And then we scroll down just a bit and we see the getting started section. So here, we select our configurations and then we'll be presented with a command that we need to run at our terminal. So for my system, I'm running Windows, I'm using Conda as a package manager, I have Python 3.6, and I'm gonna go with CUDA 9.0. There's no need to install CUDA separately. The needed CUDA software comes installed with PyTorch if we select a version of CUDA here. I'm gonna go with CUDA 9.0 because I've seen some issues with 9.2. If you want to give 9.2 a shot, go ahead, try it out, see if it works, and if you run into trouble, just uninstall it and then reinstall with the 9.0. So we'll copy these commands and we're ready to run them at our terminal. What you'll notice is that we're installing both PyTorch and Torch Vision. I'm here now at my terminal inside Visual Studio Code. So I'll just paste the command and run the command. Conda install PyTorch-C PyTorch. It'll take a few minutes, so I'm going to speed this up. We'll go 2 to 3x, so this is speedy. Now PyTorch is installed, and we can just verify by running the command conda list PyTorch. We have a package named PyTorch, the version is 0.41, and then we get a build and the channel. Looking at the build closely, we can see the Python version, the CUDA version, and the QDNN version. QDNN is the deep neural network component of CUDA, hence the name QDNN. So we're ready now to begin working with PyTorch. Before we do, let's cover some of the software that we'll be using in this series. In this series, we'll be using the following software for writing and debugging our code. The first piece of software is an integrated development environment called Visual Studio Code. The second piece of software we'll be using is an interactive environment called Jupyter Notebook. Once you have Visual Studio Code installed, you'll also want to install the Python plugin. This is done from inside VS Code in the plugin section. And you can see I have the Python extension. We'll be using Visual Studio Code primarily for debugging our code. VS Code makes debugging and inspecting our objects pretty easy. It's also useful for exploring the PyTorch source code. The navigation features for navigating the source code are pretty robust. We won't use VS Code until part two of the series and most of our time will be spent inside Jupyter Notebook. We automatically get Jupyter Notebook with the Anaconda installation. Now, bear in mind, neither of these tools are necessary, but they do make our lives as developers a lot easier. I'm in a Jupyter Notebook now. Before we run our first PyTorch commands, let me just show you the directory structure that we'll be using for our project. So I've created a folder called PyTorch, which you can see right here. And navigating into this folder, we can see our project, everything PyTorch related is gonna live here. You can see that we have a data directory. This is where our data will be located when we download that for our project, for our convolutional neural network that we're gonna build. We have a resources folder where we'll put some custom code files that we'll write. And then you can see we have two notebooks, part one, part two, and then the condensed version of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and open part one of the neural network programming series, and we will run our first PyTorch commands. So here to verify the install, the first thing we're gonna do before we can run any PyTorch commands is of course import the top level PyTorch package, Torch. So I will run this. 
control enter and we have successfully imported torch so now we can use torch to ask for the version of pytorch that we have installed and as you can see, the version we have is 0.4.1. We mentioned earlier that CUDA comes installed with PyTorch. So when we ask torch.cuda dot is available to tell us whether or not CUDA is available on our system, we hope that the answer is going to be true. And indeed, the answer is true. This is because we chose the 9.0 version of CUDA during the PyTorch install, and I have a supported NVIDIA GPU on my system. Finally, we can see or check the version of CUDA by calling torch.version.cuda. So we'll do that, and as we expect, we get 9.0. If your torch.cuda.isAvailable call returns false, it may be because you don't have a supported NVIDIA GPU installed in your system. So even if you chose 9.0 for the CUDA version for the PyTorch install, it's still possible that you don't have a supported NVIDIA GPU. And in this case, the call would return false. However, don't worry, a GPU is not required to use PyTorch or to follow this series. We can obtain quite good results in a reasonable amount of time, even without having a GPU. And when just starting out, I recommend not using the GPU. The goal of discussing the GPU here and in the next video is to recognize its availability so that we are prepared to leverage its capabilities when we begin tackling larger projects. If you're interested in checking on whether your NVIDIA GPU supports CUDA, you can check for it on NVIDIA's website. The specific link is on the blog post on deepblizzard.com. If you're following the Neural Network series, be sure to watch the first two videos if you haven't already. Both of these come before this one in the series. Make sure to check out the Deep Lizard Hivemind for exclusive perks and rewards. In the next video, we will learn more about CUDA, GPUs, and importantly, why we even use GPUs in the first place. Let me know if you're all set. Thanks for watching and contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you in the next one. Software engineers can only write so much software, but machines can write enormous software machine that doesn't get tired and it types very fast with gpus it can type very fast so long as there's data so long as there's knowledge in how to create the architecture creativity we can create absolutely enormous software and this is the future of computing <laughs>